This may seem creepy to you, but Dr. Jonathan Coddington thinks catching spiders is cool. Let me get her into a vial. These plastic bags are a good way to catch uh, spiders on irregular surfaces because they can't In get fact, the vial. hundreds of scientists the spend their days catching all uh, different kinds of bugs. Grows. But why would anyone want to catch a bug? Got him. To study it up close, of course. Spiders are arthropods, like insects, but they're members of the class uh, arachnida, the other kinds of arachnids. And let me see if I can show you how you'd know that. First of all, spiders have two body parts, one front part, one back part. They have spinnerets at the back, and I think you might just be able to make out their eyes at the front. The fangs, the things that they bite their prey with, are right here, in between these two leg-like little feelers that are called pedipelps. Okay, got the spider, and now we're going to put her in a vial and add a label that I have here in my pocket. And then she'll be all ready for her new home at the insect zoo. Bugs. Everyone's got an opinion about bugs, and Mrs. Johnson's fifth grade class is no exception. Who likes bugs? I sort of don't like bugs. Some bugs, they like scare you. I like some bugs, but not pesky ones. I like bugs. I like little bugs. I like bugs that can't do anything to me. And sometimes I play with them, but not actually hold them in my hand. Arthropod is the scientific name for all the bugs you can think of. Crickets, moths, beetles, ticks, spiders, fleas, you name it. Arthropods can adapt to almost any environment, and they outnumber us 200 million to one. Our planet is really crawling with insects. Spiders are just about everywhere. Now, webs wouldn't work if you were able to see them, so they're invisible. The way I make them visible is using this cornstarch in this rubber bulb. You can make a cornstarcher like this just by putting cornstarch inside two socks, and then all you do is you just pat it. The idea is just to make a little cloud of cornstarch. And you can see that webs are just everywhere. You don't have to be a scientist to collect and study arthropods. These kids searched their own backyards, homes, and parks and found a variety of bugs to examine. What do you guys think they are? Observing live insects up close is a chance to go beyond a textbook and figure out for yourself what an insect's life is really like. Look at their different body shapes. Notice how they eat. Watch how they get around. See where they like to live. Share your findings with your friends. We learned that arthropods like living in the house and in gardens. What these insects like about the wetland is the warm climate. Insects in rainforests drink water from leaves. The water strider can be often seen walking across the water. Next time you see a bee or an ant, you might want to follow it. This concludes our report. What about bugs you don't want to catch, like whip scorpions and giant millipedes and cockroaches the size of your hand? How can you see cool stuff like that? Luckily, other people have caught them for you.
Bug collections exist all over the world, but the Smithsonian Institution's collection is the largest. Over 30 million specimens. Shipped in boxes, bags, and jars, bugs of all kinds come here to be studied and classified, many for the very first time. And they don't all end up on pins. Mrs. Johnson's class is going to the Smithsonian's National Museum of Natural History to see live insects and get all their questions answered. I want to know how many meals a day does a prey mantis have to eat. How long can a water beetle stay underwater? If it's an insect, how come it has at least 100 legs or more? Welcome to our insect zoo. Glad you made it. Come on in and let me show the you The insect animals. zoo. An insect zoo is a fun way to learn about arthropods because it's different. Does anyone know what an arthropod is? Oh. Okay, how about you? Because insects and bugs have in their skeleton on the outside. Insect specialists are always willing to talk to you, but the zoo is made for touching and exploring. This is no ordinary tunnel. It's an African termite mound standing 14 feet high. Inside, you hear termites busy at work. They're little tiny, they're little tiny dogs yeah. just eat so fast. Yeah. I wonder where the fleas are. Push a button and find out where the tiniest of creatures <laughs> hide in your home. It's on the dog. Awesome. Get right up close to underwater bugs. You can even visit a dark tropical rainforest. This Katie did came all the way from Belize. It's been living comfortably in the zoo for almost a year. Most of the animals live behind glass windows, but stay alert. Sometimes the glass is removed. It is called a red need. Mexican tarantula. Yes, Amanda. Did you go all the way to Mexico to get her? No, but sometimes they come that way. Uh, scientists go on collecting trips and bring spiders back for us. I have here one live cricket, and I'm going to put it in the box close by. Ah! While Mrs. Johnson's class enjoys the show, Dr. Coddington arrives backstage. Well, often when I catch spiders out in the woods, I bring them here to the insect zoo in the rearing room. This is the behind the scenes part of the zoo where we keep all the live insects that we put on display. Ah, here's a spider that's gotten out. Now, I'm not worried about having these spiders bite me. Most spiders really aren't dangerous. They don't have venoms that you'd ever have to worry about. And as long as you don't squeeze them, I just had this little spider just in a hollow sort of inside my hand. They're not going to bite unless they're really threatened. And what I'm going to do now is put them in little homes or cages so that they'll have a happy life here in the zoo. Now, these cages are simple to make and you can make them at home or in the classroom. All you need is a plastic container like this, like something you'd get from the uh, supermarket. It has a couple of little holes in the top. Don't make the hole so big that the spider can get out. The most important part is the wet paper towel in the bottom. It's important that any live animal in captivity have fresh, clean water available to it at all times. We also put this little pipe cleaner in here because that's something that the spider likes to walk around on. Let's take this uh, female wolf spider right here with her egg sac. That's where she has her babies. They're in there. They'll come out in a couple of days. And all you do is put the, uh, the tube in there and, and give the spider a little bit of a shake, and she ends up in the bottom. So one of the great reasons to study insects is just that it's so much fun. They live small lives. Their lives are over in a couple of months. They have wings. They fly around. They have compound eyes. They're just so different from people. And I think studying something that's that different really helps to understand what life on Earth is all about. You don't have to wait for a trip to the Smithsonian's O. Orkin Insect Zoo. Go ahead, start your own. Catch a bug, give it a home. Watch it live. It's really quite simple and actually a lot of fun. With a planet full of insects, there's plenty of life to explore. Oh my God!